30 years have since passed. And while a whole lot has changed, the song remains the same. The Wolf Still Rocks. Hey there, it's Brian Ellis, uh, morning show host with 101.5 The Wolf. And uh, we are celebrating The Wolf's 30th birthday. It was February 14th, 1992, The Wolf launched. And uh, today we have another former Wolf morning show host with us. Hello to Brad Dryden. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Hi there, Brian. It's great to see you again. It's been I've a made- long time. It's been a really long time. I made so many uh, valuable friendships in Peterborough, including with yourself and with Carrie and uh, the the whole gang out there and uh, friendships that continue today. And might I say, uh, a marriage that continues today. I I met my wife, uh, Kirsten, out in uh, Peterborough. Uh, She was working for Mad Pup Marketing. Uh, Do you remember them? I do, yes. They were responsible for making our wolf wear, which I think you're wearing uh, right now. And That's and right. she was uh, she was doing marketing for them, and uh, we got to uh, got to know each other. And uh, here we are, what 22 years later, and we've got two kids, 17 and 15, That's and great. Uh, it's been amazing. So take us back to when you first joined the Wolf. Uh, where did you come from? I was coming from Brockville, so just down the road, and. Uh, I just thought Peterborough was just such an excellent market. At that time, am I safe in saying there was maybe 75,000 people living in Peterborough proper? Does that sound right? About right, yeah. How many now, by the way? Uh, You know what? It's, uh, I think, maybe 80 now, 85. So, yeah. I love the market, and I love the radio station. Even by that point, I mean, uh, it was only around for, what, a few years at that point? Yeah. what, What year did you come to us again? I was there in uh, 94, 94 to 96. So it wasn't okay. a long time. It was two years after we launched. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I always regret I missed the launch party. I always heard people talking about the launch oh. party. Where was it at again? So it was at a bar in uh, the city's north end. Um, it's not there anymore, but it was called Casey's. And it was a Friday night. It was February 14th, 1992. And it started at six o'clock and um, it was just, you know, first come, first serve. They were lined up, lined up to get in because there was this big buzz about a new station and what's going on, this wolf, what's happening. And we had uh, we had spotlights out front and music playing and inside the bar we had giveaways and it was just a big party. And I'm talking to other former Wolf staff that were at that uh, 30th uh, or the the intro party we had. I'm really glad cell phones didn't exist back then because there were probably a few things going on that we wouldn't want on social media today. So, yeah. so the the boss of the Wolf at that point was Bob Harris. Bob Harris. Correct? Yeah, that's right. And I knew Bob and uh, he eventually hired me from Peterborough to go to Calgary. He was working at a rock station there. But my boss at uh, the Wolf when I was hired in 94 was Malcolm Sinclair. That's right. And Malcolm Malcolm was a great guy. Friendship I still have today. And uh, certainly one of the real smart radio people, like so many people in that building. I'm not just saying this to kiss your butt, but I mean, uh, I uh, I really learned a lot in that station, and I loved the relationships I made. The people who worked there were were so great, so talented, and you know I got to also uh, do something that I really loved, and that was live performing. And I know that you you uh, you pick up a guitar every once in a while. I see some of your yeah. songs that you do, and they're great. And yeah. uh, do you remember a band we had? It was called uh, the Howlers. Do you the remember Wolf the Howlers? Howlers? The Howler, John Eaton. John, John Eaton. Eaton, he was our yeah. special events guy, and uh, John Eaton, and he also uh, had the uh, karaoke band. It's karaoke time. It's karaoke time, karaoke time. right? <laughs> well, the Howlers was great. I remember we opened up a gig for uh, who did? Oh, the Kings. The Kings. Yes, mm-hmm. and that was really cool. I don't even remember where that show was, but we did a bunch. We we. Do you remember a place called? Of course you do. The Pines. In yes. Bridge North? 
Yeah. Is that is that still around that place? No, it's been gone for a long time. In fact, uh, where the Pines was, it's like a Tim Hortons. So, um, yeah, oh. it's but it's been gone for a long time. But there were so many great shows that took place at the Pines in Bridge North and and uh, the patio. It was great out there as well. Yeah, I used to host a, uh, a an afternoon patio party on the weekends, which was a lot of fun. But the Howlers would play there every, every once in a while. I believe I had my bachelor party there. And why do I seem to remember being duct taped to a pole? Again, we're happy that cell phones did not exist back there for social media videos because that would have been one that would have been... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there may have been a few beers enough. involved. Yeah, in yeah, that there's, one. There's, there's, well, uh, we had a couple of moments, didn't we? A, 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 uh, a little inside inside joke between Brian and I that we'll bring up every once in a while. But one morning after a night out, and I was so hungover. You know where I'm going to go with this? Well, and you know where we were? We were at, we did these uh, parties, wolf parties at bars. And we went to a bar in Belleville. And it was attached to a hotel. So part of the deal was we would host a party, play music, give away prizes. And we had a hotel room to stay the night. And there was a restaurant connected with it as well. The other part of the deal is we got a lot of free drinks gave to like given to us. Right. And then. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the morning of, I mean, you know what it's like when you've had way too much the night before and you're hung over. I was sitting there just barely, like just slouched over the table, just barely able to breathe and breakfast arrives and Brian's plate of food is, is, you know, right, right there. And, yeah. uh, and I'm right here and it's just like, Oh, oh wait, can you, yeah. You, you, well, you, you yeah. see where I'm going with this. Yeah. And Brian looked at me and says, dude, you gotta stop breathing on my eggs. <laughs> I know. The first couple of times I was like, okay, he's hung over. <laughs> Finally, I'm like, okay, man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you did that today with COVID? Oh my yes. God. <laughs> Get That's that right. in here. <laughs> my, favorite oh, interview, man. my favorite interview of all time on The Wolf was Levon Helm, drummer of the band. Yeah. And I'm happy that at that time I didn't fully know or appreciate what Levon Helm did like I, I wasn't there yet I I I since then the years since I've certainly come to appreciate uh the band and and their genius and you know all that came with it but at the time I uh I was still uh not really into the band so I I knew this Levon Helm cat but not really and it's probably a good thing I didn't because if if I if I knew it was Lee on Helm, I think I probably would have stumbled my way through the whole interview and been too starstruck. But I do know there's a lot of people in that building that day with copies of uh, the band CDs and, and records who were coming in, and they were they were pretty pumped up. I don't even remember why Lee on Helm did he have a did he have a place in the Kawarthas or what was well, it? No, you know what happened? I think that was the time that the band played at the Pines in Bridge North. Did they not play? Because they did play at the Pines. So was that part of the same day? I don't recall. It must. It may have not been. have been. It may. It may no. have been. But you know, you talk about not appreciating. I mean, there's a, a situation where, as the Wolf, I mean, we had some pretty big bands that we were able to MC at the Pines in Bridge North and. Again, you think I look back now and I'm like, wow, you know, as a radio station, we were so fortunate to 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 intro some of the bands that 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 we were able to intro. I mean, the, the band is one. Um, I remember live. They got booked into the Pines and Bridge North and they got booked before lightning crashes became such a huge hit. So when, but they had to honor their contract, right? And and it was one of those situations where if the Pines had tried to book them after lightning crashes, they wouldn't have got them, right? Yeah. So there were some there were some great excursions uh, just down the road to Toronto as well. I mean, uh, we got to listen to Metallica's album release of maybe it was Load or Reload, whatever was was out at that time. It was at the Masonic Temple in Toronto, which was so cool. It was you know all these trap doors and very dark and goth and you know very uh i don't want to say macabre but it, the masonic temple very mysterious yep. place 
and for Metallica to be there, we escorted winners down and Lars and the band were there. I mean, that's cool, right? Van Halen, we got to go backstage and see Van Halen and Wolf Winners were coming with us there. We, and I know it's something that you guys still continue to do. Lots of trips to Toronto to see some yeah. of the really big bands and Wolf listeners are just so lucky to uh, to have that and to 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 be able to have a chance at winning stuff like that. So absolutely. So once again, uh, Brad Dryden uh, with uh, the Wolf as a morning show host uh, from '94 to '96 with us uh, for a couple of years. Um, and uh, besides uh, meeting your future wife. Um, any highlights that any highlight that sticks out from your time in Peterborough? I always remember I bought the uh, I don't know if it's still around. I'm sure it is. There's an apartment right by the lip lock and uh, it didn't have balconies. So what I would do, I was on the sixth floor. So I would basically just open up the window and sit on the, the windows ledge, having a having a drink and watching all the all the boats. Probably not recommended today, especially after a few drinks. But I just I always remember that was such a great little apartment. And uh, just sitting on the sitting on the window ledge, six floors up, watching yeah. the boats and and drinking beer. The silly stuff we do when we're God, how old was I when I was in ninety four, seventy nine? I was uh, twenty five. Yeah, about 20, 25. So the silly stuff you do. And I think back then it was. Uh, now nah, we won't worry about that part. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's boring, but uh, I had a great time. And I really appreciated working with you and our friendship that continues. And uh, and everybody, you know, there's there's lots of people. Gary Dalladay, I mean, he was a yeah. he was a guy that. Uh, yeah. was, and, and I always remember when Sebastian Bach of Skid Row uh, was at the Memorial Center for, or was at the Memorial Cup. You remember when he sang the national anthem? Yep. Yep. And absolutely. He, Swing in the <laughs> and no. why, why did he have such an affiliation for 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 Gary? I can't remember what, what the deal was between. Those I two think guys. you know the, Sebastian uh, growing up in in Peterborough um, used to watch Gary on Checks TV. Like sure. that was that's that's what you did. You watched Checks growing up in Peterborough. So, mm -hmm. um, you, guys so no longer in, you guys are no longer in the Checks building. You left Television Hill or a long so time we, ago. Yeah, we we went downtown. Um, and then now we are actually back with checks global Peterborough, um, okay. and, uh, we're on Monaghan road. We have a big building. And so we're all together, uh, the wolf fresh radio and, uh, and global Peterborough checks. So we're all cool. one big happy family. So, uh, tell us uh, what you're doing these days, Brad, you're, uh, you're in radio doing mornings. Yes, I absolutely. Never left mornings after Peterborough went out to a Calgary. After that, it was to Edmonton. After that, it was to Ottawa to host uh, the Bears, uh, the Bears morning show. After that, it was uh, out here to Halifax. That's where I'm now uh, on the East Coast. My wife and I and kids, we just love it out here. It's kind of like, you know, we've been here a long enough time that it feels just like a, a second home for us and uh, I'm I'm hosting mornings on uh, uh, the breeze here in Halifax and it's uh, Halifax's relaxing favorites and it's kind of cool because in this day and age as some you know some stations will um, uh, uh, kind of brand what they are and we are now national our, our, our morning show has gone national we're syndicated uh, at Breeze stations in Vancouver and Edmonton as well. So excellent, um, good stuff. We're, we're in three markets uh, on the Breeze network, and uh, so we're out here, out east. And, and I, I don't know if if I'm if I'm ever going to get a chance to to get back out there. Boy, I would really love to. It's so beautiful uh, out that way. And uh, man, it would be great to to see you guys again and uh, go to uh, the Pig's Ear. Oh, the pig's ears closed. Yes, oh, closed. Okay. I know. We'll go I know. To, we'll go to the office. How about that? That's closed as well. Oh, just... <laughs> where, where are we going to go? What is around? We'll find a new spot for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, Brad good. Dryden, former uh, morning show host here at The Wolf from uh, 94 to 96. Pleasure talking with you, buddy, and all the best. Thank you. You too, Brian. Say hi to everybody from me, all I right? Will. All right. Thanks, buddy.